This is the Rock House Center Podcast, and I'm John Murphy. And I'm Beth Murphy. We're here today to talk about authentic love. If mm-hmm. you have heard God's love language, which was our last podcast, you could think of this as part two. If not, it's a standalone because the, the foundation of authentic love is a really important topic. But not only that, there's an important reason why this is on our minds. Yeah. Well, we've got an upcoming important wedding right. later this week. Mm-hmm. and Some special very, people. Yeah. Near and dear to us. And so we're definitely on the track of thinking and pondering authentic love. Yes. So I think one of the interesting things which probably would shock some people because there have been so many situations where marriages have struggled, but I think it's really true that if any two, from our perspective and what we see, and we see a lot of folks here who are struggling with their marriages, and what we can see is that the way in which we help those people get breakthroughs is to work on the individual situation that they're under, which has to do with their relationship with the Lord and kind of where it is and how to help them get to a place of greater levels of internal peace, which brings about the change necessary for the marriage to resolve, come back together. And so I want to make sure I laid down that experience and our observations before I make the statement, which may seem a little bit impossible to believe, which is that really any two believers that pair off in marriage have the opportunity to have a successful marriage as long as they function in authentic love, as long as they are working on their individual relationship with the Lord and and authentic love is growing and developing in them out of that relationship. Any two people, no matter where they are in their relationship, no matter how things began, no matter what, that as they individually move forward in trusting God to fill them with this unconditional, fully known, fully loved relationship, trust him for that, then any relationship can become a successful relationship and can come out of a difficult place. It's kind of hard to believe, but that, that's definitely our very clear observation over years of helping people. That's because authentic love is the foundation of any gratifying, fulfilling, functioning marriage that's operating in the vision that God's got for marriage, given that it is his plan and proposition in the first place. Yeah, and I guess I ought to describe, get a little more detail about what it is. Authentic love is the opposite of dependent love. Authentic love is being able to love someone out of your character, out of your feelings, out of your sense of commitment to another person, and it evolves and emerges out of us as a result of the authentic love that God has for us is within us. It's out of God's authentic love for us that we sense and, and experience that we're able to do that. The opposite side is dependent love. When we love someone because we need something from them, we have a sort of an unwritten contract in our minds where we're putting all this effort and energy into that and into a relationship with another person. And there is an expectation that they will return with love that the love that we need. And commonly what that turns into is a dependency on the other person to fill the deepest kind of love that we all need, which can only come from God. So we end up having this dependency on our spouse for filling a place in our heart that only God can fill. And so they never are able to fill that. And so we're stuck in a a place of frustration, maybe resentment, that this deep place within us can't be filled by them. So that's the dependent. I'm depending on my spouse to fill something deep inside of me. And authentic love is that I just love my spouse. I've chosen that. It's part of my character. It's part of my commitment. It comes out of and stands on the foundation of how much I know and I depend on and trust God to love me fully. So it's coming from a basis of loving your spouse out of the overflow of God's love in you mm-hmm. as the source. That's the wellspring. Yes. That's the epicenter of where the love comes from. Because otherwise it becomes an undoable requirement that none of us can achieve and it's discouraging and frustrating. So in this whole concept of authentic love, we're looking at tapping into God as authentic love with all caps as, you know, as we know from scripture, he is love. So he's the source of it. And he's what enables us to, you know, when you think of our marriage vows that just, you know, basically going to love each other through the good and the bad and, the, and all the hard places and the good places and be committed for the rest of our lives. Well, we're, we all have weak flesh and we all come apart over this or that thing in the course of all the challenges of life and marriage. Mm-hmm. And the thing that's going to be the engine for the successful marriage is each of us connecting directly with God ourselves to connect and receive that love that he's got for us so that we can love our spouse out of the overflow. Yeah, there is a foundational driver that as we trust God to love us unconditionally while knowing us fully, then we are more open to 
trusting him for what he desires for us. And what he desires for us is to progressively reflect more and more of his character. So as we are open and we desire to please God out of the gratification and appreciation that we have for God's loving of us, then we open ourselves up for our heart to actually be transformed and changed and be molded to progressively reflect the heart of Christ, which is what Romans 8.29 talks about. And as we're moving down that track in our personal relationship with the Lord, greater trust, greater openness, greater allowing the Lord to change us, and then we progressively reflect the character of God and the character of God, the most one of the most central foundational characteristics of God's character is unconditional love. And it is authentic love. He loves us. He doesn't need a thing from us. He loves us out of his character. It is the essence of who he is. Then we evolve into more loving, not just our spouse, but loving all people because we need nothing more and more as we heal. We, we need nothing from them relative to the deepest places in our heart. Like a lot of people don't really connect with how much they really depend on God to fill this place of, of divine love this place of unconditionally being loved, fully known, fully loved. And until you really understand that, all you really do is just walk around in this, this need that you have, trying to figure out how to fill it. And then we default to trying to fill it in relationships commonly, and very much so in spouse relationships. And so if I am progressively allowing the Lord to change me to become more and more like him, then I'm more able to love any person, not only my spouse, without the need for them to respond in some way to fill this thing deep inside of me because what's happened is that I've trusted God to love me and is filled already. That's what you're talking about, overflow. Yeah, I need to have this place in me filled that God has put in me to seek him to fill. And then when this is filled, then I am more and more able to love people without needing them to fill that place so I can naturally move into an authentic love versus a dependent love. When you think about the scripture that says to delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, if it's the desire of your heart to be able to really love your spouse, give and receive love and be able to delight in your spouse, it's really clear that the only pathway there is to first delight yourself in the Lord and then he will enable you and empower you to delight yourself in your spouse. Right, right. I want to come back around to your point that you made up front that might be hard to digest for some people, particularly mm. when I think about clients that come to Rock House Center to address marriage issues. And of course, we meet with people individually. So we're not meeting with spouses together and commonly just one spouse will come. But whichever way it is, even if they're both coming and meeting individually, it's not uncommon for people to express to us that they feel like their marriage got off to a bad start and it's it's just over, that there's no way they can redeem it. And for any number of reasons, maybe they, they got started off in what they feel like was their marriage originated in sin. Maybe they were having an affair that led to their marriage, and now they look back with regret. Or we've had people express that they they look back and think how they made decisions at the time that they got married, and they didn't have much discernment or weren't connected to God at all and certainly weren't seeking his leading. And now in hindsight think that, well, it's just flawed. It's doomed based on yeah. how I made that decision. And, and so, and, and largely they think that because of how the condition of the marriage is when they come in. It's like they had a marriage that was a difficult, and so it, just, it created possibly a wrong start with infidelity or whatever it is. They then marry the next person, and then now this relationship is really in a horrible place. And then they assume that it's a punishment or it's some kind of formula that just can't succeed because of the way it was all set up. And I think what you're saying is so critical that there isn't a relationship that cannot be redeemed and saved and restored in the current marriage we're in. And that, of course, is not because both people work really hard or – morph into something different is because they acknowledge their dependence on God and let him change them to become a different person, to become somebody who is moving away from dependent love and into authentic love and allowing God to do a, a true transforming work in their heart. And if both people are doing that, then a marriage can be redeemed regardless of how it started. And, and then, of course, you got to address the, all the wrong beliefs about God that he would be punishing us for our bad decision or our prior sin or whatever. That's outside the character of God. That's not who he is and not how he relates to us. So you have to address those presumptions that also lead to despair about our, our marriage or anything in life if we're thinking that way about God. Mm -hmm. But the foundational premise here is 
back to what you said earlier is just that any two believers who are committed to the Lord changing their heart, delighting themselves in the Lord, and allowing him to change them to have more and more of his love, then he can redeem any marriage regardless of how much they've struggled and suffered and wrong things that have happened to them or wrong things that they've done. It's not irredeemable. Right. So what we have basically is when someone comes here with in a second marriage and it's struggling, what has happened is just that the core issue that created the problem in the first marriage just hasn't been resolved. It's a great example of how you just simply take the condition of your relationship with God and the condition of your heart to the next relationship and then you're back loving in the same way, loving dependently, loving out of the same woundedness and the same emptiness. And it just goes to show that it's not the next person. You know, it, these a lot of times these difficult situations replicate in the next relationship. So clearly, you know, the other side of the argument that any two people can come together, it's also true that it doesn't matter which other person you find, you're going to continue to bring your broken heart to that next person. And if we don't resolve the authentic love issue and the relationship with God issue, then there's going to be the same dependencies that were in place, dependent love that was in place on the first marriage that failed is going to be in place in the second marriage. And that's what's going on here. It's the consequence of just not getting healed up yet. It's not that God is whacking you because you, you know, your first marriage fell apart or that your second marriage didn't come out of the most pure motivations. That's not what's going on here. It's just the consequence of an unhealed heart continuing to try to find the dependent relationship that, that will fill a need within them that only God can fill. And they're never going to find that. And the frustrations from the first relationship will go to the next one, unless there's healing. And, of course, this is true as well with people who are not on a second marriage. They, maybe they married someone, they've been married 30 years, and it's their only marriage. But they're still in a place of discouragement or despair because of how it's been lately, how long it's been off track, things that have happened, or, again, how things started from the beginning. But in any case, in any marriage, in any relationship, actually, I mean, this applies even if you're not married, just you, sure. and you're looking at relationships. I mean, well, it could, it could be, be dating be relationships or, yeah. or parents or, or siblings. Jobs. And Job. just bosses, right? I mean, it can be bosses. We can have difficult situations and go from one boss to the next to the next, which actually is not – a whole lot unlike what I experienced. I really had a hard time relating to bosses. I really was looking for something out of them they never could give me. There was a dependent thing going on there. And just progressively never found a boss that I could get along with. And it wasn't their fault. It was my fault. There was something going on inside of my heart. I needed healing to get to that place where I would be able to engage someone on that level with authority over me and not have it mean something very deep about who I am and what my worth was. Because I had not trusted God yet to fill that empty spot in me. So that place that you just described is when we can get to that place and honesty about ourselves and any of our relationships, that's enormously freeing, of mm -hmm. course, because we can finally move outside of looking for the, the person on the other side of the relationship, the, the boss, the dating relationship, our parent or our spouse, as them changing being the answer. Mm -hmm. And just kind of my stake is in the ground on they've absolutely got to stop the terrible behavior or the fact that don't feel like they make me feel loved or special or whatever the thing is that's our disappointment in them or objection to them. As long as we're focused on what needs to change about them, which we can't control right. and is outside of our realm and just focus on not minimizing whatever they may be doing or not doing, but just looking at our own heart and what can change there. It's, it's absolutely remarkable Right. how much any relationship changes when we just focus on allowing God to change us from the inside out. Yeah, and it's really dealing with the sensitivities, and we become very sensitized to other people's behavior because we're so dependent on what they're about to do or they do. So if I've got a sense of needing affirmation and some kind of level of, we talked about love languages last week, that you know I've got a love language thing going, I have a dependency for acts of service or whatever it is, then I have a lot of sensitivity about not getting enough service if I've got a dependent need riding on that love language. And so how people heal is, is getting that foundational legitimate need solved so that they're not sensitized by the inadequacy of someone to fill a divine need through their love language, for instance. 
And I just do want to go back and reference that in all of these things, when we're talking about these divine needs to be loved fully by the Lord and to be fully known, I mean, this all falls into the Ecclesiastes 3.11 scripture that we have this longing for God to fill something deep inside of us. That's the origin of this thinking that has turned out to be so confirmed in how we've helped people here. When we begin to see that that legitimate need is there in all people and help them understand how they need to direct that towards trusting God to fill it versus trying to control pressure, to love. I mean, sometimes love becomes manipulative. I'm loving you, so you'll do what I want you to do. If I'm desperate to fill this thing inside of me, I'm going to be tempted to do that. So, yes, and elaborating on the Ecclesiastes 3.11, just the concept being that God has planted eternity, the desire for eternity, the eternal him, in all man's heart. So all of us have the desire for him and the depth of his character, which is his perfect unconditional love mm-hmm. and no the the level of being loved fully known and fully loved with no risk of rejection and all the other things that are the character of God his tender-hearted mercies his gentleness his truth his wisdom his forgiveness all those things which no person can deliver on perfectly and so we have this depth of need from him and are very disappointed when our spouse or someone else we're looking to for it can't deliver on that at the level at which we want them to and so as a as a client once aptly described to me in her first meeting that she realized when she started thinking about all this that she was walking around with her empty cup walking around to everyone that she met it wasn't just her husband it was all her friends, the people she worked with, everybody she was in a relationship with, with her empty cup held out, hoping the next one would fill her empty cup. I thought that was a really apt description mm-hmm. of what it feels like when we're in that place, and then we're forever disappointed in whoever it is we're looking to to fill that empty cup. So that, of course, is what God wants to heal and redeem. Yeah, the we, cup in that thing is the thing that God wants to fill himself completely with yeah. himself. And all of that comes from our early story and how life was set up and what positioned us to go into relationships in that sense of dependency. And that is what God wants to heal and change and redeem and work on in our own hearts as he progressively transforms our character and does it in what we've seen here at Rock House Center is is really a progressive promise of Scripture that he does do what he promises to do, to transform us by the renewing of our minds. And as that occurs and unfolds, then all marriages change. And again, that happens even when we're just meeting with one spouse here, and we've never met the other spouse. And the other spouse may be the person with some really severe behavioral problem or emotional problem or who knows what. But nonetheless, their marriage changes really significantly with even just one heart, one believer, allowing themselves to jump in the deep end of the pool and let God begin this transforming work. So I think we probably ought to just go ahead and move into some prayer here about this. None of us are Jesus, so we're all going to have this situation where there's always going to be some amount of struggling with staying in the authentic love relationship versus the flesh's desire is always going to be to depend on something in the world instead of God to fill the things that only God can fill. So here's a prayer that relates to marriages that hopefully it'll be helpful. I just invite you to join in with us. So Heavenly Father, I glorify you for all that you have done to bring my spouse and me together in marriage. I accept that your plan for marriage is for both of us to be transformed individually through our relationships with you. I ask you to continue that work so that we could each individually increasingly reflect the image of Christ inwardly and love more authentically. Father, I reject the idea that any person can fill the need you put in me to be fully known and fully loved. Father, I forgive and release my spouse of any expectation or dependence on them to love me the way only you can. Father, please replace my offense or my judgment of my spouse with empathy and increasing authentic love for my spouse. Father, we trust and commit ourselves to you and ask you to make our hearts consistent with your will so that your plan for our marriage 
and your favor upon us can be established and succeed. Father, please strengthen us to resist any temptation to try to make our marriage work in our own strength. We pray all these things in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to our podcast today on Authentic Love. And we ask that you send it along to anyone who might be blessed by this and might not ever come into Rock House Center for Counseling. And also know that you can call us or contact us through the website if you feel like you would like to talk to us or have a need for counseling or any of the services we have at Rock House Center. Yes, so we really appreciate you joining us. Have a good day.